I'll throw that down there. So listen, you've heard of Get the Children, right? Yes. You know, the ones that pass high school at three years old, or play piano at three years old, or get out of college at 12 years old, and they're considered to be gifted children. But I want you to know this, that every one of us in here is a gifted child of God. Did you know that? Every one of us in here was given a gift by God that was handpicked by Him, especially for you. You got the special gift, you got the exact gift that He wanted you to have to further your ministry here in this church. Isn't that amazing? It is. So if you have your Bibles with you, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, where we hear Paul explain to us, he says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. So he wants us to understand what spiritual gifts are for, why they are given to us, and what they can do for each other. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant about the fact that you have all been given a spiritual gift. And right here in the first verse, though, I find something very interesting, because the word gift... If you have your Bibles and you cross them out, you cross out words like I do in mine, well, you probably shouldn't cross them out, but I write on the top of it, I write manifestations. Because that's the word that's used there. It's not used, it's not used as a gift. It's, it's a Greek word, pneumatikos. And what that means is manifestation of the spirits or spiritual gifts. But our Bibles interpreted it as gifts. And I use that, and he used that word, I think, and he called it manifestations because when you and I share our gift to each other, right now, we're sitting here in church, this is one of my gifts. You all have one or two or three or many gifts, but right now I'm sharing my gift. God gifted me to be able to sit up here. I was scared to death when I first sat up here years ago, but he gifted me to sit here and to give you the gift of teaching. And when you see and hear me giving the gift of teaching, you should also see and hear the manifestation of who? Jesus Christ, right? We speak Jesus here, we speak only from the Bible here. So the gift that he gave me manifests Jesus to you. So it doesn't aggrandize me, I'm just a tool. That's all I am, I'm just a tool. But what I say up here, because he told me to say it, should aggrandize him, right? Amen? Amen. And it should help us. Like sitting up here, I hope what you learned today will help you in your spiritual walk to get a little closer to God and to find out what your gift is. Does anybody know what their spiritual gift is? Oh, ooh, a lot of people don't know where it is. Mary Carroll back there has some papers and it's like a three or four, three or four papers, I guess, pages, and that you can test yourself on spiritual gifts. And so I'm gonna ask her to make a bunch of copies next week and we'll have them out front for you. And you can take those papers home and hopefully you can develop and tell what your spiritual gift is. And it might be just something you like to do. I said that to Daryl, where's Daryl? I'm over He's over there. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to Daryl the other day. We were talking in a group and I said, you know, if you don't know what your spiritual gift is, just use what you like to do. And Daryl went, no. <laughs> And we all laughed because he said, I'm not, I wasn't supposed to teach. That's not my gift. I wasn't supposed to stand up here and teach people and, and do all this. And he said, I was a long way from that. Well, he was. But what did God do? He enabled him to do it. So if you have something you like to do, except Daryl, <laughs> until you find out what your gift is, use it. You know, use it. Use what you like to do. 1 Corinthians 12, 2, 3 says this, You know that you were Gentiles carried away into, unto these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now that's a little test, isn't it? We have the ability to receive the gift that he wants us to have, and we have the ability, if we receive it, he will give us the ability to use it. And if we have the Holy Spirit dwelling, you know what it is, it's a birthday gift, right? The day you were born again, and, and, and you put Jesus in your heart and the Holy Spirit came into you, you were born again, it was a birthday gift. So a lot of you out there aren't using your gift. How long ago were you saved? How long ago did you believe? How long ago did you put your faith in Christ? There's a gift, you know, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because now you can go home and say, I'm so excited I have a gift in here and I don't even know what it is, <laughs> right? And you can determine what it is and find out what it is and then you can use it for his edification. 
Because with the Spirit, without the Spirit, this verse tells us, we cannot confess the Lord's name, Jesus Christ, as our Lord. We cannot say it. If I were to say to you, Jesus Christ is our Lord, and you all went, yes, that means what? You have the Spirit in you, if you can confess that name. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, there are diversities of gifts as well, but there's the same Spirit. The word gifts here too, see this wasn't in the original script, even this word gift, the word I read earlier gift wasn't in there, and this word gift isn't in there either. This is the word charis, C-H-A-R-I-S. And what it means is, it means, it's, 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 it's the, well actually it's the root word of grace. It's the root word of grace. Now I think that's interesting. There are diversities of gifts, there is a diversities of grace, because it's an unmerited, unearned, free gift. Our gift is unerred and, un, and, and unearned. It's a free gift of grace from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Isn't that something? It's a very special gift. 1 Corinthians 12, 5, 6 says, there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but is the same God who works all in all. Now, you're probably going to get sick of me saying that's not the right word. It is the right word. It's in the Bible, but you look at the definition of the word and that makes it, and it gives us something different. Look at verse 6 again. We are told there are diversities of what? Activities, right? And the thing to remember, activity sounds like just something to do, right? I, 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 I golf is an activity. Uh, cooking is an activity. Uh, whatever you do is an activity. But really what it, the word is, the word that we have there is Ergema, E-R-G-E-M-A, and it means to be, to energy, or it means energized. Now, what does that say to you? We have to use them. It's not a passive gift. My ability to sit here and to, and to teach you and to preach to you is not a passive gift. If, if God gave me that gift, and if I'm not using it, if I'm not spe up here speaking, it's a worthless gift, right? So all of our gifts have to be put into action. They have to be put into action to edify him. It also speaks of a responsibility too, because that's the responsibility. He gave us a gift and we must use it. We need to stand up, we need to get energized, and we need to find out what our gift is and we need to use it to help other people. Your gift is a very, very powerful gift and it matches your personality, it matches the things that you like to do, the things that you can do, it gives you, you already have this inner ability that the gift gives you, but now this gives you the ability to open it up and explore it and use it a little bit more. And that's why verse 7, 12, 7 says, the manifestations of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of who? All, for all of us. All of us should profit from what we're doing up here today. The choir, you should have profited from that song. I see a lot of you were. You were all holding your hands up and you were worshiping God. That song lifted you up. And so those gifts that these people have of singing profits each and every one of us. Actually, the church is, is you and I naturally. And we should profit each other. Some of us have the gift of wisdom. Some of us have the gift of knowledge. But all of us have been given the gift of faith. All of us have faith, and if we put our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and His Father and the Holy Spirit, then we can find our spiritual gift. You, you take this test, uh, if you will, and, and it'll kind of help you, lead you into finding, if you pray before you take the test and say, God, I want you to give me my spiritual gift and tell me where it is, it'll lead you into that gift. In uh, Romans 12, I don't know, oh yeah, I do have it up there. In Romans 12, they're, they're actually, okay, in this one verse, Romans 12, they actually are called gifts. For the first time, that's where the word is used. It says, this is the one place where you'll find spiritual gifts and the gifts listed and, and, and not manifestations. And look at them, we have prophecy, prophecy ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, and mercy. Now those are just a few, but those are, that, that, that kind of encapsulates a lot of that, a lot of other ministries can fit up in there. Let me explain. Sherry, for some reason I have no clue, but she loves she loves to balance checkbooks. <laughs> right? 
I don't, I don't know what the numbers amaze her or, or, or what happens, or maybe she wants to find out how much money I spent when she wasn't looking. I, I don't know, but she loves to balance checkbooks. Now, let's just say that there was somebody in here that doesn't know how to balance their checkbook. I'm one, I'll admit. What would happen if you called her? Wow, well, man, she'd have a pencil, a piece of paper, and a calculator in her hand, and she'd be running over your house so fast you'd have to kick her out. <laughs> but where does that fall? Where would that fall? Mercy. Mercy, maybe? Teaching, maybe? Lifting people up, exhortation, leadership. You see, the smallest gift that you have of balancing a checkbook can fit in there. All of us here have mercy. All of us would like to gratify and edify each other in that sense, lift each other up. So, from that, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ministries that you can pull from that. Hundreds. And all you have to do is fit yourself into one. That's all you have to do. First time I took that, many of you know this, but I'll tell you, there's some that don't. First time I took my spiritual gift test, test probably, I don't know, what, 30 years ago or so, maybe 30, 35 years ago. Oh, I was excited. I'm going to find out what my gift is. This is going to be awesome. So I'm taking a test and taking a test, and we're, we're with the pastor, and he takes a test, and he, <clears throat> Ray, your spiritual gift is hospitality. Everyone, that sucks. <laughs> I want profit. I want to be a prophet. I want something really, really cool. Hospitality? But guess what? We started a small group in our home, this is in Vermont, that grew into a church. We started this church in our home as a, as a small group. And it grew into this right here. So if anybody needs a good warm place to sleep, just come knock on my door. I don't know when you're going to do it. I'm not a prophet, but I know you'll be welcome. <laughs> and that's my gift. Look at Philippians 2, 5b. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Remember that. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He was God, but he wasn't God. He came to earth as a man. But at this, as a man, he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond service, servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So here's the lesson here. Remember it says Jesus Christ emptied himself, right? He humbled himself. He became a man. And some people say that means he gave up his godship. That he, I've heard people say, he emptied himself to the point where he couldn't even relate to God, to, to, to being God. And that's not right at all. That's not right at all. It says up here, he says, it says, let this be in mind of you as also Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He considered himself equal with God because he is God, but what did he give up? His powers. Let me show you, let me talk to you about that again. It's not how we, or what we feel, it says let this mind be in you. It's not how we feel or what we feel, it's the mindset that we have for our spiritual gift. I don't have a spiritual gift. Or I have a spiritual gift, but I don't know how to use it. I, had to, I didn't intend to do this, but I don't know how to use it. No, 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 no. Get the mindset in. I have a spiritual gift, and it's worth something, and I can use it. And so the emphasis in this verse is, is on the mind. And it says, verse 6, look at verse 6 again. It says, being in the form of God, he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. So he was equal with God. That's why the Bible says... He was both man and God at the same time. He still knew he was God and he was equal, thought, considered himself equal with God, but he had given up his powers. Remember he told his apostles, and I think it was in the book of John, he said, and my father and I are one. If you see me and you, you see my father, remember he said that? Yeah. And he wasn't claiming anything he was, wasn't supposed to claim or he had no right to claim. He was God, but in verse 7 it says he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. 
And the word used here, and the word used here is kino, meaning he emptied himself, which means he gave up all of his power. And although God, he was God, he was just a man like you and I. And I don't know how he did it. I don't. I've tried to study it, tried to figure it out. And it's way beyond me, and I don't care, quite frankly. I can tell, tell you he did it, and that was it. He came to earth, he was born as a man, he was a man, he gave up his powers, and he was still God at the same time. I'll probably never wrap my head around that, but that's the truth. So follow me down this path just a bit longer. Let's go back to our gifts again. Prophecy, ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving leadership and mercy. When Jesus was with us, giving us prophecy, ministry, and teaching to us, encouraging us, and leading us, and showing us mercy, here's the question I have. How did he do it? How did he do it? How did he do all these miracles? And how did he do all these things if he gave up his power? How did he raise Lazarus from the death or, or, or hang on the cross for us and die on the cross for us? How did he do all of this? He's just a man like you and I. I can't raise anybody from the dead. I can't walk on water. There's a lot of things I can't do. But he did as a man. How did he do it? You ever thought of that? He, in the book of John, also, Jesus specifically said, of my own self, I can do nothing. Right? Of my own self, I can do nothing. But if we believe in him and his Father, if we empty ourselves of this world and everything we have in the world, everything we like in the world, put aside. Like and worship and think on God. And get serious about it, our Father will answer our prayers as well. You see, what happened is, I think it's amazing that Jesus, as a man, had all kinds of faith and all kinds of prayer, and he asked the Father for a miracle, and what did the Father do? There's your miracle. Father, I want to raise Lazarus. Boom. Father, I want to show these folks your I want to show I want you to give me this gift so I can so I can aggrandize you, so people will worship you. Let me walk on the water. I can't walk on the water. You can't walk on the water. Jesus couldn't walk on the water as a man, but he could as a believer. He put his faith in God. Does that is, do you understand that? So why can't we do it? We do. You don't know how many times someone has been a, 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 a miracle to somebody else. Balancing a checkbook. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a miracle. I never could have done that. I'm a little disappointed I'm missing 500 bucks, but, I, but, I, but I'm okay. <laughs> no, but really, seriously. If, 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 if you put your faith and trust in him, if you put the world outside of you and say, Father, I need this, if it's good for you, you'll get it, won't you? Let me quickly skip here to Corinthians uh, 12. It says, for as the body is one, I, that, just, that just gets me. I, I, we have that power in us to give each other miracles. I know people who have been a miracle to me. I really have, and I'm sure if you sit back this afternoon and think about it, you'll think of, you know, that was a miracle that person gave me. Corinthians 12, for as the body is one and as many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, one body, one church, for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews, Greeks, or slaves are free, and have all been made to drink in one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. We here today are Christians, and we are one body in Jesus Christ, and he is one body in us. And each one of us has been given a special gift, different gifts. And we may have different customs, we may have different languages, we may have different backgrounds and everything else, a difference, but we're one in the body of Christ. We can go around the world, I think this is interesting. We can go around the world, and wherever we go and meet a Christian, we're going to feel at home. It could be in Japan with all kinds of different customs, or here with all different customs, and here with all different customs. But when I sit there and talk to a Christian, I feel at home. Because we're all one in the body of Christ. That'll never happen to me and Sherry, because I'm not a world traveler. I, I think a vacation to me is a night in Dunellen. <laughs> you know, I've, been I've been away from a home for 24 hours. Yeah, see? <laughs> 
I've been away from home for 24 hours and that's it. But if Denellen was China, I could go there and find people that like Jesus Christ just like I do. Corinthians 12, 15, if the foot says, because I'm not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if your ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole hearing were missing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they are all one member, where would the body be? Right here at the Way Independent Christian Church. This is one body in Jesus Christ. We're the independent Christian church because we don't answer to any other higher authority than God and his son, than God and his son, Jesus Christ, and the book that they left us. But the church itself is just a building, right? But it needs you because you are the ones that lead your own ministries and events. And the church desperately needs you, the church being us as the body, because everyone here can use their gift to help somebody else. We need each other. We need that collective help that we, that we offer each other. We need the love and support that gifts, uh, gifts give us. We need your presence. It's really good to come here on Sunday and see you. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again, right? And if you don't know what your gift is, like we said, we can take a test. You might, you need, matter of fact, you can even go online. A test for a spiritual gift and print it out and it'll tell you. Maybe you're a good cook. Stay with the checkbooks, son. <laughs> Maybe you're a good cook, right? Come to church. Bring some, some people in. Grab a bit, make a nice meal. Come to church and, and enjoy it out here in the kitchen. That's a ministry. You're supporting, you're helping, and you're lifting people up. And you're lifting up God to them. 1 Corinthians 12, 23. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable on those we bestow greater honor and our unpresentable parts have great modesty, but our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body having given greater honor to that part which lacks it. Now this is interesting because what he's saying here is we are introduced to different parts of the body. In other words, people, different people. We're all a part of the body, so we're introduced to one another. And some people here are getting very little attention for the work they're doing. I mean, I don't know what happens here, but it's miraculously, when I come into church on the first part of the week, it's all been vacuumed and cleaned and it's all nice and it smells good. Well, somebody is doing that. Somebody is performing that work to help who? The body and to glorify God, right? Sometimes we think that the leaders of the church, the pastors, elders, and deacons, and, and ministry people like that that have ministries are the only folks here. But it's not. There's each and every one of us has a special ministry. And those, it says, all those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow what? Greater honor. Coming in here, helping in the church, doing something, going to the hospital, visiting somebody, going to somebody's house and visiting somebody, asking them if you can help them vacuum, ask them if you can do anything. You will get greater honor in that than you will just sitting here. So, where do we go from here? Well, the first thing is to know what your spiritual manifestation or gift is, because we all have one. Like I said earlier, on the day you were born, on the day you were born again, you received a spiritual gift. It's sitting here if you haven't opened it. It's sitting here. It needs to be opened and it needs to be used to get you in, into action, to get you to be working in the kingdom and to glorify him and to help your brothers and sisters. It's been handpicked by God. I think that's amazing. I know Ray before he was even born. I know him, and someday I'm gonna give him this gift. I know you, and someday I'm gonna give you this gift. And you have to open it, that's all you have to do. It's been hand-picked by him for you. So, take a spiritual test 
If you need a spiritual test, um, we'll see Mary. I'll have Mary print some out this week while she's here working in the church. And I'll leave them on the table out there. And you can take them home. And then let others know what your gift is. Let others know what your gift is so we can utilize it. Right? Amen?